has been such an awesome couple of weeks as a massive alien fan i grew up uh with both films the first two being like the creme de la creme like monster movies in my lifetime like my dad showed them to me when i was very probably way too young uh, but having somebody here who not only worked on my favorite of the uh, franchise with the second film uh, and now working on one of my new all time favorites, which is, of course, Romulus. I mean, you guys just absolutely crushed it on so many different levels with this one. And clearly that's reflecting in the box office. So how does it feel to have uh, Alien back on the big screen and being such a rousing success? Well, <clears throat> This is a franchise that I have been with uh, since 1985, technically. So like, you know, 39 years. And I've worked on, uh, oh, I can't remember how many of them. But, you know, well, let's count them off. Aliens, Alien 3. And, three. and then I uh, think you did. Alien a Resurrection. Resurrection. And then AVP. And then AVP and AVPR. And mm -hmm. now Romulus. So I didn't get to do Prometheus or Covenant. Mm -hmm. um, but it's really uh, a lot of fun. And for one reason, I got to be reunited with my old Stan Win Winston pal, uh, Shane Mahan. Mm -hmm. um, because Fede has put together a really great dream team of practical effects artists. And, um, and he wanted us because we worked on Aliens, you know. Yeah, and I saw that in an interview that he had said that at one point, uh, you know, it was nice to kind of have you guys have all this experience together so you could kind of cross over uh, the various departments. So, like, I think it was at one point he said something was going on with, like, there was a short team for a sequence with, like, the Xenomorphs or something, and uh, they needed somebody to help with the suit, I believe. Yeah, I puppeteered with Shane, and then Shane came over and puppeteered on my um chest burster and egg mm -hmm. effects and so it was just like old times it, it literally felt like we were at pinewood studios in 1986 again although we didn't look the same but it felt <laughs> no, the same. absolutely and so if uh correct me if i'm wrong i was trying to do a little bit of background research you uh primarily worked on the face hugger effects on this one correct the chest burster chest and, burster and okay the, the egg birthing sequence mm -hmm. and, the, and the egg um, <clears throat> for the offspring. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Gotcha. So yeah, I, I got to say that was one of my favorite bits to this. It's an always an effect that I think, I mean, it's synonymous with the franchise, but when it's done correctly, I feel like has just some of the most gut wrenching and hardcore stuff that you can find in the alien universe. And I think that you guys absolutely nailed it with this one. I loved seeing the little chest burster just, really come alive like it was probably my favorite looking chest burster since probably back in aliens uh or even just the original itself honestly like it just looked so detailed and everything yeah. like what was it like uh coming back to that were there any new techniques you guys used to bring it back or was it more just kind of updating uh the old well fede um you know explained to me that how he wanted to approach the scene and i realized oh this is kind of pivotal you know this is sort of like it's the <clears throat> it's the birth of the Zeno mm -hmm. and as it always is, but he wanted to uh, make it feel less explosive and violent because we've all seen that. That's the, mm -hmm. that's the way it's been done uh, and more like a human birth. So he wanted it to feel like it was, it had exhausted itself coming out through the chest uh, and that it sort of worms its way out kind of, almost meekly mm -hmm. and um while we were puppeteering it live um which also by the way is one of the great things about practical effects is that the director gets to direct it like they can direct an actor mm -hmm. and one of the notes he would he would say was now look up at your mother and <laughs> so we would you know gaze it uh, up uh but when i realized oh this thing's gonna have some screen time you know um then i had to kind of think what what would i like to do to detail this, to take a deeper dive into the chest burster. And that involved the translucence of the silicone, the precision of the sculpture. Um, we had two scales of, of chest burster um, because Fede wanted a smaller chest burster. He, he felt like the, the classic size of mm -hmm. chest burster was just too overwhelming. And Alien Wu uh, is, you know, she's not a large person, 
So we had to scale it a little bit more to her. And, but that meant that, you know, it was only about like that big. Yeah. And it didn't give us an opportunity to articulate it quite the way we wanted with snarls and bladders. And um, <clears throat> we even had a, a, a color shifting effect in it where it's under the dome. If you notice it darkens and it's got I, like veins underneath it and it sort of flushes. That's what I was going to say. I noticed that was something that I even hinted at it in our review. I think it was the spoiler free one where I'm like, you just see these things you're so familiar with, but you see them in such greater detail. And that was something that always struck me that I've seen it now three times in theaters. So it's one of those things where it's like every time I see it, I notice all the little veins and stuff inside of it. I mean, it just looks so uncanny and real like to me it's like it doesn't even look like a practical effect anymore just the way you guys got everything so perfect the way it just yeah. looks so natural and well, I, I just thought that was so fantastic well i didn't you know shane and and legacy did the the big xeno so they were doing sort of the more heavy animatronics so mm -hmm. that sort of frees you up to be a little bit more um creative and a little bit more specific with the with the intimate uh, kind of aspect of the chest burster. And I've mm. done a lot of chest bursters before, but, um, but uh, we were really going for like, I don't know if you've ever seen footage of a, um, of a newborn um, uh, kangaroo. Yeah, no, I, I it works saying, its yeah. way up and it's, and it's a fleshy little translucent thing. Um, so the, that that's what we were going for with our, our silicones. They also have the arms are more developed on this one. Mm. Um, so we articulated the arms and the hands so that we could get some squirming. And then we added a um, birth sack to it so that kind of pop it pops out of the birth. I noticed so that yeah. when it first comes out, it's sort of this bloody mess and then it pops and out comes the fresh, you know, uh, uh, the newborn uh, version of it um i should say also that um other other folks who were big contributors in this uh ivan poharnak who's a hungarian uh, makeup artist created the chest part that's broken open and <clears throat> one of the nice things that we were going for was that you know there's a thickness to rib cage and the meat of a of a rib cage you know we tend to you know like in the original basing it on that it's sort of like a shotgun where it just sort of blows mm -hmm. apart and there it is but where are the ribs? What has happened to the to the person? So we've done some of those things in the past on on, on alien movies I've worked on, but this one um, kind of let us go a deeper dive. And then the, and then Dane Hallett, who is a production illustrator, did a really nice illustration of a um, very clean and pristine um, chest burster. So we sculpted it in three D. You know in the in, modeled it in the computer and really went for that kind of precision of sculpture a guy named Maury Ruiz who who was one of my key artists um, sculpted that and and so we used some of the you know the updated technology of 3d printing and 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 uh, uh, you know as well as smaller servo motors and new mm -hmm. silicones and so on yeah and would you say that um, even with I know everybody really wants to push for practical especially in horror as you should i mean it, it's like you were saying it's so much uh more beneficial to everybody on set when they're directing the effects and they're also just getting to interact with it you hear that so often from actors who say it's way easier to get into the scene when there's something physical there um do you see like has anything gotten easier when it comes to having like the benefit of maybe doing 3d modeling and being able to kind of make these little sculptures and things like that does that help at all in the process or is it it, it uh, helps the it, it helps the process in that we can once we have the form of the sculpture done i can move that over to our uh, animatronics department and my man dave can start building his animatronics in the computer in 3D mm -hmm. while we finish the sculpture, while we do, while we make a mold, while we're making skins. Traditionally, you would have to make a clay sculpture, you'd have to make a negative mold, you'd have to core it up, but you can do all those steps uh, now in 3D in the computer. Ultimately, what you're making is a physical thing, but it's got its, its roots in the computer. Awesome, yeah, no, I've always been curious to see just kind of, uh... You know, because you're always hearing that, um, you know, everybody's 
trying to paint it as just like a big war between CGI artists well, and you know, uh, practical yeah. effects. It's like, I don't see it like that when you actually talk to somebody who works in it. It no, seems like and, everybody's just trying to work together. And, and, and these days I, I do, I do hear that with the, with the fans and, you know, like I love our fans of who love our technique and I agree with them, particularly with a horror movie, but you can't make a movie these days without digital work. It is such mm -hmm. a comprehensive and awesome tool. So when people complain about bad CGI, really what they're complaining about is the effects that they notice, which tend to be the ones that are rushed or were thrown at digital artists at the last minute, because much of what you see is in the invisible art is the hardest thing to do. Um, so you just have to pick the right tool for the, for the right job. The other thing I wanted to mention in terms of the visceral real quality of having something on set is that we know you hear this acting is reacting. And if you don't have a physical thing on set, the actors are forced to do their best, which can oftentimes be great. Um, and sometimes uh, maybe it's not as great for them as it could be if you had a, an actual creature right there in their face. And in our case, we had Aileen Wu, who uh, really does a spectacular job, uh, both in the face hugger scenes that she's in uh, and in the chest burster scene that, that, that I worked with her on. And she was so cheerful and professional because we had to bring her in a day early to just cut the hole in the set floor, put a, put a slant board Jeez. in because there's a fake body and she's coming up this way. Right. And so, and, and she was super cheerful about it. And I, I asked her like, before we get started this, you know, you're going to be in this all day. And when we shoot, it's going to be, you know, you're going to have to, and I, and I said, have you ever done anything like this before? And she said, I've never been in a movie before. And I said, <laughs> that's perfect because you're the perfect, uh, perfect person for this. And she really pulled it off. And so did Isabel Merced, if you see what mm -hmm. she's doing as a witness. Uh, so they are like avatars for the audience. And mm -hmm. the way they are freaking out over the situation makes our work that much better. Absolutely. I mean, it's just one of those things where in that sequence, and we can talk some spoilers because I'll definitely put a notice before, but um, it's just when the, the ship starts spinning almost, like coming out of control, all I'm thinking about is, oh my God, that little chest burster is already out. Like it's going to fall on top of her and everything. It's like, oh, this is horrible. Yeah. And I, I loved uh, something that I was curious to ask you about. Um, were, did you have any hand in um, kind of the the wall? Um, like, you know how they had the kind of the, I don't even know what you'd call it, like the sack on the wall where you see the little chest burster already busted and the, the Xeno starts to come out. Because uh, we've that, never seen that before. That was an that, alien fan. Yeah, that cocoon sort of. Yeah, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, that was Shane's um, team, and um, well, that was my chest burster skin on the ground. But like, that's a that's a very smart thing from Fede, right? Like, because mm -hmm. usually they like you go like, "There's the skin," and it runs off and does something mysterious that you don't. Know. So this is the first time we've gotten to see the cocoon that that has developed around it uh, mm -hmm. and, and it to be birthed out of it. Um, I thought that was a brilliant um, addition to the kind of the life cycle. I agree. I think it just kind of, it adds some of those questions where it's like, yeah, as fans, do we need to know everything? Not really. But like when you've kind of been watching Xenomorphs for your entire life, uh, whether on VHS or big screen or D or Blu-ray, whatever, it's kind of like you have these questions you want to know, you're curious mm -hmm. and all, uh, you know, there's comic books and lore and things, but until it's on the big screen, in my opinion, it's one of those things where it's like, it's all just speculation. I agree. And it might sound a pompous of me, but I think, you know, the, the canon is what's uh, in the movies, you know, and if it mm -hmm. makes it to the movies. And even then, you know, you can still pick and choose a little bit. The great thing about this design, as conceived by Dan O'Bannon and Ron Shusett, who wrote the first film, and then visualized by H.R. Uh, Giger in, in the fantastic design is that it is a xenomorph so mm -hmm. each one can p potentially have nuances and different ways of manifesting and um i think that's really a, a, a really fun that's part of why the, the what explains the longevity of the of the franchise is that you're looking at the same creature but there's always a little spin on it things are always a little bit different and new additions are welcome 
Agreed. Absolutely. And I guess kind of the last question I'll have isn't necessarily related to Romulus, but like we said, you worked on a ton of other, uh, you know, alien properties and other things. I got to ask, and you've also uh, worked on some Predator stuff with the Predator and everything. So I got to ask, are you interested? Would you like to return to the Alien versus Predator franchise if uh, Fede and, say, Dan Trachtenberg were able to get together and make something happen? I would, you know, I've, I've worked on two of those films and most recently on Prey. We did the mm. feral predator on Prey. And I think that it's still untapped territory. And, you know, we could uh, basically do a reinvigoration in the way that Prey and Romulus have reinvented the predator and, and alien franchises. Um, and I think there's a highbrow way to do it too. I think, you know, the, in the two different camps, particularly in the alien fan camp, um, people tend to think like, oh, no, we're just, you know, it's just turning into a cheesy kind of like cash grab or something. But I think there are some ideas. And and these two directors uh, are, are the people for it. And and I, I think now's the time. However, I certainly understand, you know, we're, we're now building the or rebuilding the universes to take them in, you know, another 40 years into the future, literally, uh, not just screen futures and story futures, but, but in reality. Um, so we, we may want to dole it out step by step, but, mm. uh, you know, I, I see no reason why these universes can't cross. Yeah. I, I say definitely. I, I like the idea of taking your time and, you know, giving us a few more installments. I know we have, mm -hmm. uh, Predator Badlands with Dan Trachtenberg, they just said today has started shooting. Uh, are you going to have any involvement with that? Uh, or is that one already kind of where schedules kind of crossed there? I, I don't know anything about what you're talking about. I okay, know. fair enough. Fair enough. I like it. Uh, I'll absolutely definitely hope to circle back with you on that one. Because again, I, I think that Prey was also just excellent. I'm so yeah. happy. Prey, Prey uh, was terrific. I, and, you know, I think the thing that everybody wants to see just as fans is just that movie deserved a theatrical release. You know, I, I, I love that it got a physical release, but I want to see that thing on screen. I know it's a it's a you know, there's a, there's reasons for it that make sense, um, but it, it, it it's all behind the scenes, you know, corporate reasons, not um, not mm -hmm. quality reasons. And it's as if you've been reading my Instagram, sir, because I just <laughs> I just posted something about how much I want to see a theatrical release now of, mm -hmm. of prey and i don't know what's involved in that if it's even possible but um but man like it, 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 i got to see it on the big screen at wow. a couple at the premiere and a, and, a, and a couple of other screenings and it's fantastic it just mm -hmm. is a gorgeous movie and sarah shackner's soundtrack in prey is top notch man i just to me it's like one of that was one of the best uh soundtracks i've heard in it in a few years you know? i absolutely agree my wife has never seen a predator movie before and i watched that probably like a handful of times when it had come out on hulu because it was just there and she caught it probably about 10 minutes in and she was so caught off guard when you know the predator starts showing up and everything yeah. and she's like this is awesome what is this i'm like this is predator this is the stuff i've been trying to get you to watch for years <laughs> like but yeah. uh yeah she was much well, more uh excited for alien she's uh so she's getting into it very slowly Good, good. Well, you know, you, people come around as they come around. Mm -hmm. That's okay, too, you know. <laughs> Absolutely. But, all righty, I don't want to take up uh, too much more of your time. This has honestly been fantastic. Do the hard shit, gonna do it live. Put Splattercast, kick it every day they live. Smash your ass.